Grimper UK here. Another exciting video coming up, this time about old 13 amp plug tops that would otherwise be thrown away. Now if you're a scrimper and save a few bits and pieces for further use, or if you make whirly gigs, you'll probably find this video interesting. Uh, if those two things don't apply to you, you're probably better off finding something else to watch because you might find this a bit boring. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I make whirly gigs. Uh, this is one I made about a year ago, featuring a German Shepherd dog chasing a burglar. You will be wondering what on earth this whirly gig has to do with parts from old 13 amp plug tops, but all will be revealed later. Now it's amazing how you can find useful parts in an old plug top, so we'll start with this one. This is a, a moulded on plug that was, that's been chopped off. Um, basically, there's not much in that of any use. You could take the fuse out, um, there's a little fuse in there, which you could put in your spares box, which will be useful as a spare fuse if you haven't got any. But other than that, there's nothing really you can do with it, so the best thing really is to chuck it in the bin, get rid of it. When you come to this type of plug top, this is an old Volex plug top, and you'll notice it's got solid pins, as opposed to the... Uh, more modern one with insulated pins. They've done this for safety to stop small fingers. I mean if you've got great ugly fat fingers like me it, it's, it doesn't matter but if you're a child and you've got tiny fingers you could possibly get your fingers on the pin when you're plugging it in so they changed to insulated ones. Now these aren't as useful uh, as you'll see a bit later on. So we'll go back to the original Volex. Now first of all you can take the screw out it's usually a brass screw in the middle. Might not be brass but otherwise and there you'll be presented with the inside of the plug. This one's a bit dirty, but that doesn't matter. First of all, the little cord clamp here. Well, you probably think that's not, not of any use, but actually it is. If you watch any of my other videos, especially the ones repairing old hoovers, you'll see I use these as cord retention. So if you take these little screws out here, you'll usually find two, usually self-tapping screws, and you might find those useful. Put them in your odds and ends box, so that's one useful little item. And, and of course the cord clamp. It's worth putting those in your odds and sods box for further use, especially if you fiddle about with electric things like I do. And then you've got the pins themselves. Take the fuse out obviously. You've got a little fuse carrier like this and the fuse itself. As I mentioned you can use the fuse, put that in your spares box as a spares fuse. Um, get rid of that. Now the pins themselves, take the pins out the actual plastic part, the top and that, it, that's no good. You can, I can't think of any use for that. If there was, I'd have a load of them. So that goes in the bin and you're left basically with the, the pins and the fuse carrier. Now, this one here, the other end of the fuse carrier, I'm going to move the camera a bit so you can see a bit better. That's better. You can, I think you hope you can see that. That one isn't much use. I usually discard those. There's a nice bit of brass, a bit of solid brass you could use in projects if you like fiddling around with things, but generally I, I throw those away so they're no use. But these two are, are a treasure if you're a, a whirly gig maker, and I will show you how they're used in a whirly gig a bit later on. Um, the second use for them is that if you chop the top off the pin, you end up with a little piece like this, or like this. They're, and they're little tiny collars, and again, they're very useful for whirly gigs, and there's other uses too, but I use them primarily in whirly gigs. These, with the pin on like that, I actually use those as small bearings. What I do uh, on my whirly gigs, you've got a sh whirly gigs, you've got a shaft running across the top, and that shaft needs to run in something, um, and I use, I hammer these into the the, the base of the thing and then I run the little shaft through there and it acts as a bearing. You can use the top, take the screw out of the top here and that little screw hole you can use as an oiling hole. You can if you wish put the screw back in um, to stop the water getting in or you can leave it out, it doesn't matter. They also have another use, you could lock a shaft in there and use it for a little fence or something in a model but they're quite useful for, for I've used quite a lot of these in whirly gigs and as I say if you saw the tops off they make nice little collars now the actual fuse carrier itself, again that's got another useful little round collar which you can use on things like whirly gigs and other things. All you've got to do is, is that little bit of copper is sort of swaged on and if you get a, hold this in one pair of pliers and grab that in another you can just yank it off and you'll end up with a nice little collar which is quite useful. I mean 
might seem a bit silly keeping things like this, but if you go to a model shop or somewhere, you'll have to pay for these little collars, and being brass, they're quite expensive, and these are things that you'd otherwise throw away. So I find it quite useful. Now we'll go to another plug here. This is Those are quite useful, and I, I'd store those um, for future use. This is an old MK plug top. Now these aren't much good, really, for, for what we're going to do. I'm going to take this off and show you. They're good plug tops. They were one of the best plug tops you can get, actually. You've got the little cord clamp in here, which you can take off, and I would salvage that, and also a useful fuse. In this case, it's a, a 3 amp one. You can always keep those in your odds and ends box, so that if it's there, if you need it any time, why throw it away? Um, you've got this type. They, doesn't, they don't use a hole and a screw. They just use a knurled nut on the top and the cables wrapped around the pin like that, you see. So there isn't really much in there that's worth keeping, to be honest. I mean, there is some little brass pins, but without the hole in them, they're not much cop. You could drill a hole in if you want, but why bother when you've got the other ones? These little brass nuts on the top, I think these are rather nice. It's probably worth, again, if you're a scrimper, you'll understand, it's probably worth keeping a few of those in your odds and ends box, because they are quite nice little nuts, I think, with a little nerd top on. And why throw them away? They don't take up much space, and you never know, it might come in handy one day. Not not for a, a plug, obviously, but um, in a project you're doing, and you might want a nice little nut. So I would tend to keep those. I mean, obviously, there's, there's only so many you can keep. I've had thousands of plugs go through my hands, and most of them have been binned, but I do often find useful parts. So basically, that's it for that particular one. On this Whirly gig, you can see some of the parts that I've taken from plug tops being used. In this case, uh, it's being used as a little bearing. This is all this is is a pin from a 13 amp plug top like this, and I've drilled a hole in the base and hammered it home, and I'm using it as a bearing for the axle rod or the camshaft. Um, you can use the hole on the top as a useful oiling hole, or you can leave the screw in as long as you don't tighten it up to stop the water getting in, and that will act as a bearing for that that camshaft. Along further, you'll see there's another one in use on this end. And, and towards the fan end, where the propeller is, you'll see I've got another one in use there. And all, all it is, is a, a pin from, from a plug top. Costs nothing. Uh, if we go along to the other end, you'll see more parts being used from a plug. These little collars are, are simply, again, a plug top pin, which I've sawed the bottom off. And you end up with a little collar like that, which does the job admirably. Now another use for these little joiners... Um, is in with your cycle or even the motorcycle if you wanted um, you can imagine the scenario you're out on your bike and you, one of your cables snaps might be the brake cable or the gear cable it's frayed and it snaps well I always carry a couple of these with me in my saddlebag where they're handy is you can join two Bowden cables together with one of these if you pop one in that end and one in this end and then tighten the screw up as tight as you possibly can like so that will join a cable. It might not look elegant and it might not be a lasting repair, but it will get you home. It's very handy if you're stuck anywhere just to join a, a couple of bowling cables together to get you home. I found it useful anyway. The other thing I've used them for, if you've got the round ones like this one, this is actually part of a fuse carrier. There's the fuse carrier we took out of the plug earlier. If you force the the little copper piece off you end up with just a little collar like that with a round one you can actually I've actually used these as a nipple for the end of one of these cables if you've got a cable that's broken and you're desperate um, you can actually put one of these on the end like so I've actually done this in the past and just screw that up really tight and it will act as the it might not look elegant, but it'll do for the nipple on the end of a, a cable. You can insert it in the brake fitting or whatever. As I say, it look a bit ugly, but it might get you home. So that's another use for, for the actual uh, parts for a plug top. This is one of my band saws, and I just want to show you something on this. It's me the, this is the top bearing guide, or blade guide, which carries the ball bearings. You'll notice it's made from some sort of cast alloy which has cracked here and the whole thing fell apart. 
So in this case, what I've done, I've just bolted it together. Now that is nothing to do with a plug top, I agree, but I'm showing you that first because I want to show you another part of the bottom which has also been as broken and I've repaired with a plug. Now this is the bottom guide to my bandsaw and you'll notice this is also broken off. This alloy just snapped off one day when I was using it and the guide fell out and it was again a soft piece of metal. And I, I looked up the cost of this and this piece here, you had to buy the entire assembly and it was about £75 or something ridiculous for just this tiny little bit of alloy. So I had a look at it and in the end I decided to use a 13 amp pin like this. I just sawed the top end off and then I drilled a small hole through it and as you'll notice there's a, a, a thread here and I just put a long thin bolt, um, screw through with a, a couple of washers, shape proof washers on there. The bolt goes through this end, through there and I even made it elongated so it can be adjusted and I've had that working for several years and it's worked perfectly fine as a guide for the bandsaw so that is another use for a, a pin off a plug top that you would throw away now obviously you could have used any other bit of brass if you'd had it but it just happened that was the perfect size for the job so there you go so don't always throw your old plug tops away if you're a scrimper there's a use for them bye for now